Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. We got some critical Sekiwake matchups worth covering, but those guys will be here for a while. How often are we going to have a chance to cover Nishikigi and Hokuto Fuji being Yusho relevant into the double digit days of Abasho? We gotta look at this one. It's been a great series between these two, tied 5-5, with a 3-2 split for Nishikigi in the fights we'll look at here. Both Rikishi are having shockingly monstrous runs right now, so does either one have an edge between them? Let's dig in. This is a prime example of a Hokuto Fuji Tachiai, Captain Faceplant planting his face directly into Nishikigi's shoulder. But Nishikigi straight eats the contact and doesn't budge. One thing Hokuto Fuji really likes to do at the start is hit, then get his arms swinging into mega thrusts. It doesn't matter that the movement is more visible, the speed of the swing and the power behind it is what's doing the work, not any sort of subtlety. When Nishikigi blocks down on his right arm though, his plan is stuffed, and he gets in close instead. Hokuto Fuji has a pretty decent pull down game as a backup plan, and he backsteps here while pinching and yanking Nishikigi's right arm to try and get him off balance, but Nishikigi has no problem sticking with him and using his decision to back up to start pushing and get him to the rope. This is not how Hokuto Fuji wants to fight, something that's evident by the way he bats his hand around on Nishikigi's left arm while getting pushed without a clear plan on what to do on that side. He's pretty clearly defending against the left hand joining the push, but it's an awkward defense at best. Once he's at the rope, he steps right and tries another angle on the pull down, but Nishikigi is ahead of him on that and forearm shoves him to prevent Hokuto Fuji's hand from making any real contact with his head. From here, Nishikigi holds on with the neck push, and while this is the type of push we often point out is vulnerable to a solid parry, a backward stumbling Hokuto Fuji is not the guy that's going to take advantage. This was, frankly, a pretty brilliant fight from Nishikigi. He knew he could absorb Hokuto Fuji's hardest shot on the Tachi Eye, and he controlled every moment of the fight from that point on. Can I just say I miss this camera angle? I'm sure most people want the higher angle one with more to see, and it is more useful, but I really like this one. Anyway, Hokuto Fuji blasts in again, and again, Nishikigi eats the shot. Hokuto Fuji, though, changes tactics. Instead of going for big swinging thrusts, which Nishikigi stuffed last time, he keeps his hands inside and just pushes. This is a little more effective. Nishikigi doesn't move back far, but he does give up a bit of ground, and he's getting stood up pretty tall. Nishikigi is leaning a bit to his left, so once he finds his balance, Hokuto Fuji gives him a right-handed face shove. In the moment, it's the obvious hand to push with, since it's higher and can land on a more vulnerable target than the left hand under the arm. But the shove also goes directly into Nishikigi's stance, so he hardly moves. In theory, this is okay, because Hokuto Fuji immediately follows that up by lowering his head to drive in again. Problem is, the shove created just enough distance for Nishikigi to react with a left hop and pull down attempt. It doesn't throw Hokuto Fuji off too much, but it's enough to thwart his advance, giving Nishikigi an opening to charge in himself. Hokuto Fuji responds with his own shot at a pull down, but as we saw in the previous match, Nishikigi clearly knows this is a major Hokuto Fuji tactic once he's on the back foot, and Nishikigi has no issue following the small sidestep. From there, he's on the belt, and although Hokuto Fuji is a big, big boy with his weight forward, his feet never have a chance to get set, and that's all Nishikigi needs to get him moving backwards. This is where we see how fine the line can be between one guy's mistakes and the other guy's brilliance. Nishikigi obviously has a good idea of what Hokuto Fuji wants to do, but where he kept using that knowledge to make things happen in the first fight, in this one it was more a case of punishing Hokuto Fuji with reactions to his missteps and predictable tactics. Hokuto Fuji changes things up in a big way here. Nishikigi is clearly ready to absorb a big hit again, but this time Hokuto Fuji angles off and gets his hands up early without attempting an immediate big push. Given how much better Hokuto Fuji is when he's moving forward, the fact Nishikigi gets him backing up again makes it look like this was not the best adjustment. But he's also switched up how he defends while on the retreat. He has his left hand up, and even though it's at a pretty awkward angle for defense, it's clearly getting in the way of Nishikigi's right-handed push. He also gets the big swing in on his right side. Nishikigi gets his elbow down to block it, but this bends his arm, and Hokuto Fuji gets his balance switch to lean into that arm and negate most of its pushing power. By the time Hokuto Fuji's feet are on the Tawara, Nishikigi's push has been successfully thwarted. 
Hokuto Fuji might never be a defensive tactician, and this might be a ploy that doesn't always work, but it does here. Hokuto Fuji hangs out on the Tawara for a moment while Nishikigi commits harder to the push. Then the captain blasts off, and once he's got both arms around Nishikigi's back with Nishikigi stood up straight, there's no stopping this push. It worked once, so Hokuto Fuji tries the step off hands up Tachiai again. This time he also does a better job getting Nishikigi's hands out of a pushing position and creating a chance for himself to attack, which is always his preference. He's got Nishikigi's left arm clamped and his own left hand in a great pushing position under the arm, and as much as Nishikigi tries to bear his weight in against the push, much like the end of the last fight, he's too upright and thus can't completely hold his ground. It's all he can do to keep his movements lateral so he can keep moving around the ring and not out of it. Once he's covered like a dohyo and a half of space, Nishikigi steps left, pivots hard right, and uses Hokuto Fuji's clamp as leverage for a throw. It's not enough to win the fight, but it's more than enough to stop the push. Hokuto Fuji is still much lower than him though, and even though his clamp is now mostly his right arm just hanging over Nishikigi's left, his body position lets him push up with his left hand and immediately bounce Nishikigi onto one foot. Somehow, this is the thing that lets Nishikigi hold firm and get his weight down, and finally Hokuto Fuji is not driving him around like a big green bus. But then Hokuto Fuji tips Nishikigi's weight to the side just a bit, and finally he gets an opportunity to go for a pulldown with Nishikigi's arm in no position to block it. And down goes the tree. This is an interesting Tachiai adjustment, at least to me. Of the five fights we're watching, this is the only one where Nishikigi doesn't lean in on the Tachiai. I'm guessing he felt like he was playing in Hokuto Fuji's immediate shoulder push from the last two fights, and that makes some sense. Hokuto Fuji was stepping to the side a bit, so coming straight up rather than leaning forward could create enough extra distance to bait Hokuto Fuji into overreaching. But this time Hokuto Fuji is the one ahead of the game, coming up with an instant palm strike slash forearm shiver to the dome, and I'm frankly astonished that even Nishikigi can just soak up the hit like this. The strike does bend Nishikigi back though, and Hokuto Fuji is quick to press that advantage. Nishikigi, however, keeps his hips in, then forces them back and his weight down, then rises back up when he has a good enough hold to force Hokuto Fuji up with him. It looks like a show of superior power that simply didn't exist in the other fights we've watched, but whether he's actually increased his power or figured out how to find that small edge which partially negates Hokuto Fuji's, this is something Nishikigi hadn't shown before. It's worth noting then that this was part of Nishikigi's ridiculous run in the back half of this past May, which led into his ridiculous run at the start of this Basho, where he overall just looked like a different guy. In any case, Hokuto Fuji can't get him moving, so after a stalemate, Nishikigi hits a snappy hip wiggle to try and dislodge Hokuto Fuji's left grip. It doesn't work, but it does lead Hokuto Fuji to make a mistake similar to the one from their fight last May, where he hits a hard step back to try and create an opportunity. Once again, it gets him moving back, and Nishikigi just makes him keep going all the way out. So purely on a matchup level, Hokuto Fuji has been the best version of himself this Basho, but Nishikigi continues to be an entirely different version of himself. He's looked human since the loss to Kota no Waka, but even being challenged by Mitakeyumi and Meisei, he showed a level of resolve that wasn't always present in the past. It makes sense. He may never be in this position again, which makes things a lot different than another 8 and 7 Basho where a wrestler has little reason to risk significant injury in a bad position, but it still makes him more dangerous. Given the absolute control he showed in their May fight, even when getting cracked on the Tachiai, Nishikigi has to be considered the favorite. But Hokuto Fuji's completely new opening tactic shows he and his coaches are willing to try something different. So this is not in any way a gimme. If they can find a tactic that actually gets Nishikigi moving backwards, Hokuto Fuji has a very real chance of winning. But it's not a coin flip. In addition, I should note this is being recorded after day 10. Nishikigi has blown through the whole Sanyaku, while Hokuto Fuji is about to face his first such opponent in Wakamoto Haru. The last time Hokuto Fuji started this well, when he popped off a 9-0 run to start September 2022, he absolutely imploded once the competition ramped up. I'm doing this video now in anticipation of a Day 12 meeting, but whenever they fight, I think Hokuto Fuji's mental game can swing the odds a decent amount in either direction. If Hokuto Fuji can keep up with Nishikigi through whatever Sanyaku opponents he's had, he could hold that increased belief that sometimes drives Rikishi to do incredible things. 
If he slips though, he could feel like the dream is dead and become a less dangerous opponent for Nishikigi unless he gets off to a fantastic start in their match. Alright, that'll do it for this breakdown. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.